How's it going, guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today, oh, I just noticed me, uh, my P12 might be a Nazi. Um, yeah, today I'm going to do the mission called uh, Restoring the Tuning Shop, uh, and I'm going to take the MK38 civilian thing because I did the mission where I can now get trailers. I've got a, a step deck for the uh, civilian MK38, and um, yeah, uh, this will allow me to be able to customize stuff in the uh, the garage. So. At least I'll be able to mix and match the add-ons without having to travel to a different region. And as I've got the trailer store, I can fix and repair everything. So it covers most things. I definitely want to get the um, the next one on the list of missions to do, I think, will be the like repair thing, so you can repair and refuel stuff. Um, yeah, as for the mission, though, I need uh, four lots of metal beams and two... Uh, sorry, four lots of metal rolls and two lots of metal beams. I was going to go originally to the warehouse in the top right corner, so I've drawn a bit of a random line across the map. It was just a, sort of a new way to go, um, certainly on this playthrough anyway. I flew through there yesterday with the, uh, the twin steer, but I modded it was Fox's uh, twice twin steer. Um, yeah, there ends up being a bit of a change of plan as I'm driving along. Um, so I'll go to a different warehouse in the end. But yeah, I even went and found uh, my loaf, OG loaf. Um, what was he up to? Oh yeah, he was sitting on the uh, Antonovsky. He's like Otis red in life, sitting on the dock of the bay. That was the last time I was chilling, chilling with him. So uh, yeah, we went and got him. And like I said, I've been able to get the uh, the step deck trailer, which yeah, I quite, I quite like to be honest. It well, the main thing is it's uh, got a little loaf platform up at the front, and it's still got its five slots it can have, which at this time I only need four anyway. So. You could do it with a ramped flatbed. I just I don't really see the point. I'd be towing it behind me, but yeah, it just tips so easily that I don't really find uh, much gain from it. So as for uh, the MK38, well, I've gone quote unquote like the normal way out of the garage and following the normal road. And as you can see already, like as soon as you hit this snow, there's a little patch there, and it's just instant. Uh, I don't know, not probably not death snow. I'd say super snow. Um, but yeah, it just makes you go like a mile an hour or something, if that. And that's about it. I went through the same uh, patch for the last couple of days. I've been through in the Tager, uh, the Dolphin, the Zix 605R, the Phoenix. They all seem to just do the same thing. Hit a patch of like snow in this case and uh, go that slow. So yeah, it, it's, it doesn't really bother me, but it just seems a bit of a shame because it doesn't really feel like much differentiation between vehicles anymore it just feels like certain areas are like a preset speed and that's it and yeah it's a little bit uh, predictable in some cases but yeah as I said I'm swerving off to sort of the left you don't really need to go this way and to be honest I wouldn't say overall it was like a longer more tedious way the one of the big things that is kind of happening with all vehicles so it's not specifically this vehicle um, yeah is the lack of torque and power that's going on which it's not just me that said it quite a few people were mentioning it in the comments yesterday in the live stream and that as well so it's definitely something that's to the point where quite a few people are noticing it so fingers crossed that they actually patch it or do something about it because yeah it's uh, it's just little things like this but it's obviously happening quite a lot when, once you get bogged down and you get out of the boggy sections it's just you kind of waiting for something <laughs> more power well not not even more power it's the power that you should have when you bought the engine that you put in the truck but it uh, seems to take a while to kick in plus there's this whole like you can hear now there's my revs they're there but not a lot like especially as I'm fighting the current at the minute yeah there's not a whole lot of uh, effort seems to be going on but it's more like I've been rev capped so I can't really there's not a lot I can do about it there's various times throughout the night I go down into the low range and that doesn't really make any difference because obviously that really does rev cap it. I think it was there, yeah, I just quickly jumped it over to uh, neutral to see if I could hear the engine like rev to its fullest. And it didn't, and I, what I sort of found interesting about that, when I did the review in this the other day, and I was on a flooded, no not flooded foothills, uh, Lake Covd and I jumped uh, from the ice just into the water and I was floating a bit and then when I was revving the engine it wasn't giving me any revs at all because there was like no resistance on the wheels and um, yeah I just found it interesting that then when I put it in neutral there it didn't rev either so I'm not sure 
if that's like a separate thing or not, other than the lack of power delivery earlier early on, it seems like there's a yeah, something going on with the way the rev caps are working at the minute, which doesn't seem to be in a in our favour or anything anyway. So thankfully, once I got through that first section, I actually do quite like driving through here. The uh, scenery-wise, it looks pretty cool. I just generally like if you've got a vehicle that can handle the terrain and it drives through it at a uh, acceptable speed and everything, then yeah, I'd rather go kind of off-roading, freestyling across, uh, especially that you've got like the river flowing and a few little islands dotted between, it was uh, quite good. But then yeah, you hit little patches like this again where I believe there I got caught on a tree that's just sitting underwater that, that they do seem a little bit eager these days when you catch a tree. It's more when you catch a tree, it feels like it catches your wheels now, it doesn't... I don't know, it used to seem to be able to roll over them easier. Funnily enough, that tree I rolled over just fine, but there's been a couple of um, trollish ones. But yeah, with this, I mean, part of it was it was a good excuse to test this vehicle out. I wanted to use it the other day, um, but yeah, I didn't have the trailer store unlocked or anything. And like I said, I wanted the sideboard, so I could have just used the military version, but even though they are basically the same vehicle, just with different add-ons, I suppose, as far as like the uh, yeah, the saddle low and blah blah blah, and the sideboard. Yeah, it's sort of not new. <laughs> I kind of want to drive this because it is officially new, even though it is just a copy with different add-ons. And like I said in the description, it says that there's more talk to this one over the military version, but certainly with whatever they've done with the rev caps, that's uh, not the case at the minute. I end up cutting out about a minute and a half here because, long story short. You see how slow it made me go. Eventually I got to the other side. The current was slowly pulling me over to the right. It was making my trailer sort of drift over to the right a bit as well. It wasn't really an issue. I think here or somewhere I got... It feels like I got stuck for, I don't know, yeah, not long. But just put a winch, winch to that and then you can sort of see now-ish there where I kind of pop off whatever I was caught on. And that was about it. But again, just going through that water, it was... a uh, it's not terrible, it's just you sort of sit there, yeah, squeezing the throttle, looking around, thinking, well, <laughs> I'll just, I'll wait a minute or two for me to slowly creep towards the horizon. And uh, if the water was deeper and the mud was thicker and all the rest of it, it'd sort of make a little bit more sense, but it just doesn't feel natural with, like, how big some of these vehicles are and all the rest of it. And I was driving this thing around, this and the loaf, for hours the other day, just purely going around in these, doing not much of anything. Just messing around and... Uh, it felt like I got on better than I did. I'm not sure if adding this uh, step deck trailer is kind of... That's where it now starts to not like towing heavy weight or anything. But I do think the uh, custom muds, in certain situations, certainly not with like the introduction of revs and all the rest of it, but um, yeah. Again, I do like the look and characteristics, certain ones anyway, of these custom muds, but they certainly do feel a bit underwhelming to say the least. So one of the garages I could go to, if I go right now you can kind of see the little track going uh, through the water, there's a garage on the other side of there but as I said just as an excuse to kind of drive this thing around and uh, see what it can do, I decided to go to that garage in the top left, uh, top right corner because I kind of figured as well, if I, I may as well empty the garage that's sort of the most out the way and I'll save the other stuff just in case the um, I need to use that stuff later in missions, which if they've added it in here, there's a fair chance that's going to be the case, especially if it's limited cargo. Um, yeah, when I got to this point though, I had a almost like an issue with this part in my exploration video, I think it was, when I was in the Zik 605R, and even that almost didn't make it across here. But yeah, this thing, um, as you can see, I edited a few bits out, but I had a good few goes, I was here for a good few minutes. Particularly with the current going this way, I have no doubt that coming back the other way it'd uh, not be an issue, but trying to fight the current, again you can hear the lack of revs, because it's like, even though I'm in auto and I'm in first gear, it should theoretically be giving me, you know, all the way to the top of the rev range, but there's just, particularly in water it seems, I don't know if it's the current or the way the mud under the water has been coded, but yeah, it's just an absolute rev cock blocking machine, <laughs> so there's like, I... Again, I can't remember if I left it in... Yeah, well, there you go. I've gone down into low. There's just... There's no difference. You can't hear the revs changing or... 
anything going on. Um, yeah, I was sneaking around for a few minutes. Not a lot was going on really. So, but by the end of it, my trailer was kind of all wonky. I tried to put a winch on it to that tree. I could have got out of here and turned round back up the road a little bit and had another attempt, but to be honest, I came to the conclusion that even if I get to the other side of this river, then I've got to drive through a swampy section as well. And if I had a bit of a... I suppose... I've actually quite liked this vehicle, but I was going to say, if I had a bit of a better, more capable vehicle uh, in the current setup I'm running anyway, while it's dragging a trailer and all the rest of it, then I probably would. But yeah, there's just a swamp on the other side of that river, so I kind of figured... Sod it. <laughs> it sort of not put me off, but it yeah, I get a little bit bored when there's a vehicle that's just struggling and always feels like it's trying to tap out every two minutes. I kind of just got a little bit less enthusiastic for going the long way, shall we say. So I was just like, sod it. I'll go back here, I'll go to this warehouse, because otherwise again, I'm going to spend 10-15 minutes getting over that river. I could have got the loaf off, pushed the loaf in front of me and then winch my way over. I'll probably will at some point. I might just leave a loaf um, just past that water section I was like struggling to cross just to use it as a mobile winch point in the future but for now I don't want to leave OG loaf sitting out on uh, the map at the minute he's got uh, missions to do. <laughs> you can see again here as well this is more the coding I would say it just doesn't let you really go faster than this but thankfully the current's not really going against me it's more just hitting me from the side so albeit slow but yeah I think it's kind of a combination of things I'd sort of say I don't know 15-20% of it is probably these custom muds which I definitely think need a boost by now 20% of it odd is the uh, the current is very strong especially if it's like the Zik 605R if that was struggling just about every other vehicle has been this one couldn't get through um, yeah it's I think they could do with toning that down, but and then I'd say about 60% is the uh, the lack of revs going on at the minute. But anyway, thankfully that warehouse had four uh, metal rolls as well. And I think the warehouse at the bottom that's kind of on like the docks, sort of like a proper port factory sort of thing, I believe that's got eight metal rolls, so they're definitely going to be uh, getting used in the future. And then there, just quickly, uh, I use the roof rack from the loaf just refueled because yeah this thing has only got 200 litres and well I suppose it's little things like this when you get stuck in these sort of set or not stuck but you're forced to drive this slow it doesn't really matter across this river to be fair but yeah the, all the time I'm flooring it I'm over you know 10-15 litres a minute or whatever that's what they're trying to gain from this I think or that's kind of their objective is the slower they can make you go in various areas it's effectively the more fuel you're using and that's what like for the distance you're covering anyway and that's where it felt back in the day so to speak like there was more differentiation like stuff like the Zix and the Dolphin and the Tiger and the top end vehicles would kind of punch and plough their way through sections like that a lot better now it feels like there's a much more strict kind of just nope like nothing is getting past faster than it'll let you And again, sections like this, it's not like... I wouldn't say it's bothering me, it just takes a little bit of the... Like that river section I was going through on the highway, where it was just washing me over to the side a bit. It's just not very fun. It's kind of by now, it's like, okay, devs, <laughs> we get it. You can code map to make my truck go extremely slow. <laughs> like, you, yeah, it's, it's been done now. But again, I, I would like to try this truck as well, um, especially now I've got the customization option unlocked. I might go back to some MUDs, but I don't know, because that's the problem. It's an American vehicle, and it's not got the proper MUDs. It's going to give me all the chained version, anyway. Well, it's, um, it's got these custom MUDs, I know that, but I mean like all just the normal MUDs. Again, I don't even think these MUDs are as good as the normal MUDs. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but they need to code them... These days, they need to be more in line with like the P16 tires or the P512 PF. I believe that's got uh, custom tires on it as well, or the Cat 770G. I believe that's kind of uh, the same as the P16 tires as well. 
So, uh, but yeah, as far as the chain go, it'll give me like the... I can't remember if it's the off-road or the all-terrain versions, which are... Like, I'll use them. I still, on vehicles like the Navistar, but the Navistar's weighted very nicely to where it feels quite realistic for how much it weighs and how it behaves in the game for the size of the vehicle. It certainly, you can tell it weighs less than the P16, for example, but that thing's like a big chunky monster. Um, yeah, I don't mind using the non-mud chain version on the, uh, the Navistar, but on lighter vehicles, they definitely don't seem too keen on it. And yeah, I have to say, like, compared to... Well, the other day, I was, like I said, I was driving this thing around for hours with a loaf, and there was that initial power thing kind of going on the whole time. But I'd certainly say when, when this thing's now got a trailer on as well, it does feel a little bit uh, on the sluggish side. So there's just a quick view. As Basically, as I'm just going back to the garage, it was a more of a direct route. I could have came this way on the way to that garage. I still would have encountered the same problem with that river. Um, I was just sort of, one, mixing it up a little bit, but two, I hadn't gone the other way and, like, uncovered that part of the map officially. You could see the map, but it was still kind of in that greyed-out, uh, foggy sort of shade on the map. And then, yeah, you sort of get back, even though the current, well, it depends really, they're kind of going both ways at the minute, but I'm steering hard left as well, so it's not really... Somebody said it, I think, it, I'm sure it was in the comments somewhere, that um, maybe, because I was saying this thing was under steering, and they said it could well be because of the power, which I agree to a degree, because I know what they're meaning, and I remember it happening on the uh, the other military one, but I think this thing is just a little bit under steering as well. But it could be the custom MUDs that might be a factor. See, now I would say I'm going definitely with the current. I think that's about... That's near as makes no difference you're gonna get it like as much in your favor as that and it's still just that same limitation of a few mile an hour but at least it's a nice scenery around here you can enjoy the view while it's uh, ticking along a little bit slow a little bit slower than it I'd like it to but then when you got vehicles like the Zix I think even the Zix was I'd say as slow through here so that's the thing, I... A lot of, like, this phase is just issues and things that happen and all the rest of it are probably going to get played out a fair amount for me in vehicles like this because it's a new vehicle and I'm going to drive it more. But, yeah, I don't want to pin it all on this vehicle because I don't think it is. I've noticed, like, and again, a lot of other people have said in the comments the same characteristics kind of laced throughout all the vehicles they've been using as well. So it does seem like some bigger background nerf thing going on than like just specifically this vehicle and overall I'm still liking this vehicle I'm definitely looking forward to getting this uh, Tager unlocked at some point I don't know how many missions or whatever I've got to do so I can't honestly say if I'll get that thing unlocked in the next couple of days or whether it will be more like a week or two But yeah, considering it's uh, supposed to be like uh, some form of Tega 2.0, it'll uh, and apparently it was the C255, was it from Mudrunner? So definitely interesting because I remember that truck on Mudrunner. It was uh, pretty decent the last time I went on Mudrunner. Actually, that was the the uh, the vehicle I took to the map in the like C group of vehicles anyway back on that game. So I eventually got out there. I was trying to get in high range up here. Wasn't really having it the first time, but we got there in the end. There's a good old Navistar. I had to drive out there the other day just to... <laughs> I forgot to draw something on the map, so I had to go back to that point just to draw it back on the map so it made sense. I have no regrets. Uh, going through here, I was going to swerve off to the right, and then again, just partly like... Not necessarily if I've lost my enthusiasm, <laughs> but I get a little bit impatient after a while on this game like once there's kind of an allotted amount of time that I expected to do the mission if it goes on too long and it's too boring obviously if I get sidetracked with like some mad loaf rescue or whatever that's different <laughs> I'll, I'll take the blame for that but um yeah so now I was just kind of like dropping the hammer trying to go the shortest distance I could see there is a perfect example of the loaf being a goddamn professional 
the trailer was tipping over and I thought like oh any more a couple more degrees and it'll automatically unpack my um, metal rolls and then yeah as you can see just at the last second the loaf jumps off because he unpacks like one degree before the trailer unpacks and then when he jumped off just the way it shifts the weight once it officially unpacks off the trailer it kind of let the trailer lean back the other way and stop my cargo tipping and I've still got the loaf grabbed him with a winch you look away for a few seconds look back and he's on his wheels and he's good to go so you can see even there though where I got caught on that tree that was clearly a killable tree and um, yeah even the lack of power was like it didn't like fighting through that see when you got a loaf behind you as well I'll, that's why I was hoovering the winch in there just clip that tree but the loaf sits flush within like the width of vehicles and trailers and stuff so if you can get your trailer past you can get the loaf pass it's just again one of the many reasons to get yourself a loaf he is a goddamn professional so good it'll be vehicles twerking for him so drop these off metal uh, yeah rolls now I just need to go and get two metal beams which again at this point I hadn't officially decided where I was gonna uh, get them from this is just uh, like what I'm able to do now I've got a trailer store I can get that trailer fix and repair everything because yeah, like I said, 200 litres, and I used not far off 320 litres, really, because I also used the roof rack off the loaf. Um, yeah, after the first kind of drive, I decided to go and get the metal beams <laughs> that are as close as possible, just nipping back down there. I wanted to try a little bit of a different run. I'm going to go again, in quotes, kind of the normal way out the garage, but you've got all those patches of snow. I want to see if there's like a better route to skip round them. Right, it'll drift there, smack me uh, the Tager. Yeah, I just wanted to see if there is a route that you can kind of punch your way through a bit quicker. And as you can see now, as soon as the barriers on like the edge of the road have gone, I start swerving off. If I went straight, there's definitely mud and snow there that would have slowed me down. There's a little bit of snow I run over there, but it's not a big enough patch to have time to kind of kick in and yeah long story short it was going pretty well driving along here I apologize I think there's a glitch there there that was my mess there I uh that little patch of water I just drove into I was just about to go left and then I seen the marker in the distance and realized I'd have to go right to collect it and then I just panicked <laughs> didn't turn either way and just smashed straight through the middle but yeah it's definitely better to drive along like the muddy sections of that first bit funny enough I remember this as well and the Zix it was the same this section of road is like really boggy so <laughs> like whatever the game's thinking you go free freestyling across the uh, the countryside and I'm able to stay in high and drop the hammer and then you get to that that awkward invention for vehicles called a road god damn it don't like them makes sense now why it's an off-road vehicle you would assume though. Generally speaking, vehicles that are good off-road can at least drive on a flat road. <laughs> that would be the uh, the assumption anyway. And yeah, I, do you know what, I can't even remember this little section. I definitely drove through here the other day when I was uh, doing my exploration video, but I don't know, it's definitely uh, not liking it at the minute. <clears throat> More so than I thought it would be anyway. I mean, I'm not saying this is the case, but I even I remember at this point when I was getting the footage, I was even thinking to myself, have they nerfed this a bit since, like, yesterday or the day before or whatever? Again, I don't necessarily think or know that they have. I, I, this trailer is usually fine with most vehicles, but there is a couple of vehicles I've driven in the past where... The truck itself is fine on its own, but then when you actually have a trailer with it as well, it starts to not like towing a lot of weight. I mean, a good example of that, to be honest, I find anyway, and other people have definitely mentioned the same thing, is the P12. It's not the worst vehicle in and of itself, but then when you start trying to tow heavy loads, or especially the like, custom special objective trailers, yeah, the P12 really doesn't like towing extra weight or anything at all. It could end up being the case with this vehicle. Unless I've just hit a few unlucky patches or whatever. And like I said, it's not driving me mad or anything. I've, uh, I've still been enjoying myself tonight. 
I still don't think this vehicle's terrible or anything, but it's definitely not like the new go-to truck. But it's not not either. It's good enough that as it's a new vehicle, you can definitely do some missions with it, and it's um, the way this has been behaving tonight. Should we say I'm pretty sure most of the vehicles I could take out. And I'll be getting similar results, as I said, even the Zik 605R, which is pretty solid as far as they go. Um, that almost got stuck in that river crossing. It still really didn't like the super snow that I just avoided a few minutes ago and so on. <laughs> you can tell now as well, sort of, ran out of um, shits to give, really. <laughs> I'm trying to do it uh, sort of realistically and calmly anyway. So just floor it, drop the hammer. And lack of revs there, you can hear it again, just... Yeah, yeah, the revs completely die down to, like, tick over, pretty much. And finally, I'm going to end up having, like, I don't know, torque withdrawals or something going on. High range is even... I'm even more of a fan of high range now <laughs> than I was before Phase 6. And then again, I was thinking I could swerve off to the right, but I wanted to see if I could jump down this gap with um, and actually not lose the loaf this time. Well, I'll say lose the loaf. He dived off like a goddamn professional to save my cargo. But yeah, that time it actually had enough ump still in it to maintain the high gear. It didn't like it the first time. Uh, yeah, took a bit of damage. Funnily enough, I keep forgetting now that I can't recover stuff to the garage and automatically get fixed. And again, I keep driving around like I'm in Grand Theft Auto 5. I don't know why, I've not even played Grand Theft Auto for, I don't know, since the last time I made a video on it, I think. Um, but yeah, I keep crashing into things on purpose. Like I'll just randomly go and smash into a lamppost before I recover to the garage, and then it's like, oh yeah, shit. I, uh, yeah, that'll cost me. Although, you'll see in a minute... I did find, um, I don't know, something that might come in handy, it's not, uh, I don't know, it's not particularly groundbreaking, but again, depending which order you do these missions in, it might help. So uh, drop both those beams off and then you get a little animation or half one, it kind of just instantly turns into a building. I can't, something custom, I think, I can't read what the rest is, it shrinks my screen. Um, yeah, that's done though. All in all, like I said, not a bad mission, you can still make it easier on yourself, I could have gone down to the port factory section and got metal rolls from there and all sorts so I tried to make things a little harder <laughs> that's what she said um, yeah about 10 grand for the mission as well so it's pretty decent by the time you've done all these missions it's uh, I suppose you'll rack up 50 odd grand um, and yeah now I've got the trailer store and I've got the ability to customise vehicles in the garage so what I was testing there was splatting the loaf into a, a telegraph pole thing recovering it it's got a bit of a swollen ass for some reason not sure what's going on there don't know what Otis Redden's been up to um, yeah, when I recover to the garage, you can tell it doesn't fix anything. When I came out of the garage, I fixed my own loaf and my uh, roof rack points went down to 251. I recovered to the garage, left the garage, checked my roof rack points again and it's still 251. But then if I recover to the garage, go to customise, de-equip and then re-equip the roof rack, leave the garage, now my roof rack's got 300 again, so it retops it up that way, so I don't necessarily need the refuel and repair thing. But yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, because he's a goddamn beast. And I'll be back soon.